Hello, friends, and welcome. It is the first official full episode of Find Your People. I'm Katie. And I'm Mandy. And we are, um, we have just had the best week. We've got so much to talk about. I don't think we're going to have time. We've had to edit ourselves <laughs> today because we, um, I was worried that we wouldn't have enough to talk about. Mandy's like, girl, we could talk to that plant behind Mandy and and have an hour for the content <laughs> no so, doubt um we are really excited to be here with you um to spread a little love and joy in the world and uh, let you in our brains if you really want to come into the craziness that is us um, yes thank you all so much we've had so much fun getting feedback um from our friends yes. who have listened um and it's great like my friends are like okay wait now tell me about katie and oh i forgot to tell you we've already got a making road trip planned by the way so Heck just yeah. um i need to follow up with you there's some details on that we need to okay. we need to work on um okay. but yeah so it's been so fun to hear from you guys and uh we're excited and appreciate all the support and even have a friend who immediately was ready to work on our merchandise so hey listen hit us with your ideas for our merch like the crazier the better and apparently i my catchphrase is we're so fun <laughs> i went back and listened and said it like five thousand times in that first episode and um lesson learned people were making fun of me for it too which i am here for because i make fun of myself but um i'm gonna try not, not to say it much but that you're not wrong fun. we are fun we are but put that on a mug. I'd wear that on a t-shirt too. But the wilder merch, the better. That way we can just get any and every idea and then figure out what really works. But I, look, I'm here for it. Wine stoppers, done. Um, you know, key fobs, whatever. Just go crazy and, and send us your ideas. I love that. Um, And the other thing we got were uh, requests for things to talk about. And the first one, Katie has, uh, <laughs> Katie added the link. So we're going to watch it here together. It is a, it is a video. Katie, how do we describe that? Um, I, I, I believe it's a, um, band very, would you call them a band like a family band it's like it's very righteous gemstone oh a hundred percent righteous if gemstone. you watch righteous gemstone you're definitely gonna gonna get some righteous gemstone feelings out of it it is um a man and two women mm -hmm. who are I'm gonna share my screen with you okay, yeah, I, I got yeah, it pulled yeah. up yeah i got Good, it yeah um the, the description is christian dance break okay do we are we gonna be able to hear the sound i don't know if we will or not i've got it muted right now but i can bring it up because uh, i, I can can't remember what it. song it is oh i don't know if we know the song okay um, um it's uh you'll know it when you see it i'm gonna put a link to it in the description of the episode okay good good i was i was gonna say well if we were real fancy we'd say like it'll be in our show notes it, that's what it's gonna be all the podcasts I listen to have show notes. We Look are going to have show notes, Mandy. I didn't know we were that fancy. We so are anyway. that fancy. Okay, let's go. We're going to watch it. Um, okay, so I think before we watch it, <laughs> like we don't have to go very far. We don't even have to start it to me. If okay. we're going to like review it, I think we first need to start with um the the ladies are dressed. I feel like they're both mothers of the bride from yeah. 1992 <laughs> yeah, yeah but then we've got him and he is just he's feeling himself he's loving it and i'm here for the confidence the Absolutely. energy if we want to call it Kenner that energy he he's, is enough he's he the epitome of a ken now i also feel like perhaps we should delve in a little bit at least on my end to uh, my feelings about Christian music. Okay. Um, um, I grew up the daughter of a choir director. You did uh, at school and at church. 
And you sing in the choir currently. To say I am a traditionalist is an understatement. I want nothing more than a gigantic pipe organ and my hymnal. Thank you very much. Yep, I agree Um, completely. On Easter uh, and Christmas, you can bring some Handel's Messiah up in there with a string quartet. That'll be fine. Yep. If we go much beyond that, I start getting uncomfortable. It Mm -hmm. makes me nervous Mm -hmm. i don't know why Mm -hmm. i don't know if i'm afraid that people are going to start dropping out and speaking in tongues i don't know what it is but it makes me nervous so i'm happy for other people to enjoy it and i'm glad that they have that outlet to bring them into the church that's Mm -hmm. great Mm -hmm. it is not for me it does not speak to me either so Um, that just that's my background going into this Mm -hmm. whole Oh, I'm here for the chamber music. I'm not here for the drums and the um, guitars. I'm just so not. We're, we're coming at it from that background. Yes. Yes, indeed. Um, okay. So. In other words, I'm a big old snob. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm a music snob. Um, right. I n- know chamber music performers and I am a snob about it. Yeah. Uh, but okay so let's get to him like ken i'm gonna call him ken i don't know what his name is but ken the Lord. the kenergy he's given off is just it starts with the hair for me top mm-hmm. to bottom he's got mm-hmm. on a suit but it starts with the hair because it's very helmet like it's slicked back listen he's he's got he's got, he's got a widow's peak uh-huh right? he worked real hard on that mm-hmm. in the mirror as he gave himself yeah affirming quotes while he was getting dressed in the morning and when you look at when we start playing it and you go a little closer up he's got a very strong brow and so he almost to me it took me a minute to figure it out he looks like the caveman from the geico commercials yeah yeah, yeah. and he gives off that energy as well okay that's um, why all right so let's let's oh gosh okay i'm gonna unmute it we'll see if we can pick up on the recording Oh, uh, here we go. Yeah. Oh my lord, y'all. I have not watched They're it. In synthesizer. A I forgot. Now we are doing a jig. Yep. And how I about mean, Paul like... back there playing the drums? Oh, listen. Listen. How long did they work on this? Oh. Okay. And... I want you to know. Oh, where did it go? Uh-oh. Oh, crap. Uh-oh. Hold on. We hold lost on. Hold on. It. All right, we'll get back to it. I'll, while while we're discussing this, I will get back to it. I'm sorry I hit the wrong button because I was so, I wanted to, every, except the drums, every um, instrument has, what, what, hold on. I got to get back. You lost sorry. it now. <laughs> I did. Um, every, um, every instrument has, a Listen, name this is it. this is oh every instrument has a name on it this is great audio content <laughs> right i'm sorry we're at christian chenoweth singing which it's not what i can't find the uh okay here we go um it it look hold on if we were um we are not good at this show. If we were professionals, we would play some elevator hold music right now. I know, we, right? Where but we every instrument, before we, okay, every single instrument has um, a, come on, Katie, has a name on it. So, every you know, I've, uh, uh, mm-hmm, okay. Uh, um, there's a little church down here that records themselves singing uh they record their whole service on sunday mornings but it airs i don't know when they record i don't know if it's live i don't know they are the cutest things you have ever seen and i guess i had shared enough of them on facebook and instagram that when folks have seen this particular clip the number of times i have received it it, it's no fewer than 10 but i just hadn't watched it in a minute so can you see so here can you see my screen Mm -hmm. back on the screen okay so um notice when we get we're about to get over to the where we were let's see let's see there we go okay notice the um notice the keyboard okay 
that's it are we in hell in georgia is that where we are this is the present so his says oh the keyboard says the present so yeah so now it looks like they're in in hell in georgia oh okay okay. oh the truth oh it's not their actual right right yeah it's not their actual names i thought it was like george and fred and now the ladies are taking the lead and he's back oh but here he comes y'all he's coming back up yeah so i I think the problem is going to be that i can't hear you when i've got that on so yeah i know so we got the present and we have the truth the drummer doesn't get a name he's not cool enough but hold on let's keep watching let's keep watching okay maybe if you mute it you can hear me I mean, okay. So now he's dancing and like doing like some total. Can you like, hear me when it's muted? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. We'll just leave it muted. White man oh, overbite. The swirl. The swirl. Oh, and now like oh, we right. got a little hip action, but not too much hip action. Right. Is- so everything is synthetic. Like the drums are, if you look, the drums, those are not like symbols. Those are electronic symbols on that drum set. You can see better than me. Yeah. I mean, it's like. Oh, here. I mean, he is just loving this. Breaking it down. I mean, it's the hair. It's the. It's the microphone. You have mm-hmm. people who wear those. This microphone. Yeah. Do you uh, when you preach? That was the. Oh, gosh. That was the other thing. I don't know why it's doing this. I just. Yeah, I that's. Well, we watched it. Now. Yeah. So the the other thing that really got me was that he. um he had a Britney Spears mic and the women had handhelds. Oh, so he was feeling that. himself with the yes. Britney mic yes. and like breaking it down. And he does a whole dance break number where he basically does like break dancing. And but Did you wear a Britney mic when you preach? Uh, I, I have used a Britney mic, I normally use a lapel mic okay but okay. i have used a britney mic before and it is um i feel like britney i feel like i should be dancing and so i get where he's coming from like when you put it on <laughs> like you feel like feel you it? need like a yellow snake over your shoulders is what I feel like. you are a slave you're i'm a slave for you when i put it on i'm a slave for you and so i get it i get where his energy oh is God. coming from on that because yeah. you know now let's say friends anything like that that you see that oh. you think you might enjoy please forward along the other uh request i had was uh based on where i live will not be surprising to anyone but it was about beach etiquette i had a oh, friend yeah. no. last yep. week i'm here for that so tell and, us all about it you know there's I won't get into it, but we're we're having a crazy fight down here right now currently about who gets to use the beach. Is the beach private? Is the beach not? And it's a long complicated really? thing. Yes, it's nuts. But okay. because of that, there's all these crazy rules about tents and how far back you have to be to set up a tent and yada, yada, yada. But so it, it's even more um, heightened around here, but she was saying that they her uh, cousin had gone out and set up the tent and what you know at like 5 30 when he was walking the dog and in the meantime somebody had come up and set up a smaller tent like directly in front of them oh, and then the turned blocked. on the and then turned on the music and listen we are you know like you have to get especially like down here on 30a where if you're in the rental chairs yeah which you have to be if you want to see because of this stupid fight you're you're almost touching you know the people next to you on either side so you're gonna hear their music um it's just it's gonna happen i will tell y'all if one thing you all will learn about me is that i am one of jason isbell's biggest fans ever 100 percent and the first time I ever heard the Morgan Wallen Whalen, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Um, oh, first time I ever heard his cover of Cover Me Up was out on the beach. And yeah, it didn't go over well. My friend Allison, I've never been, I'm not a fighter. My friend Allison was like, I'm going to need you to sit down. <laughs> 
as my granddaddy no, used you. to say, I'm a lover, not a fighter, but I will fight you over some Jason Isbell. I mean, that's just an affront to the humanity. Um, yeah. But Jason Isbell doesn't mind. Like, he gets paid every time that Morgan Wallen, you know, plays that song. But anyway, so yeah, the uh, the other uh, thing that happened to my friend that was here last week is, now listen, this is next level. Some folks that live right there brought out like a gigantic speaker, like a full size, big old speaker, complete with its own stand. And they set that up on the beach. Y'all, that is not proper beach etiquette. Let's no. just make that clear. Okay. Mm-mm. So anyway, yeah. So um, any other suggestions that y'all have about topics that we need to cover? Feel free to lay them on us. Bring it on. We are happy to discuss. Of course. Of course. I love it. Um, So my week has been fun. I um, went down to Macon a week or so ago and my parents had found this little um, pot that I made. I thought I would, uh, I love, I couldn't believe they found it. I, um, You'll see in a lot of this, I love the arts. I know Mandy does too. She's a singer where I am not, um, but I appreciate the visual arts very much. Um, And so, but I'm not an artist in any way, shape or form. I mean, I'm just not. I wish I was, but I'm not. I surround myself with talented people because I'm not talented. And I surround myself with cool people because I'm not cool. I'm the most uncool. Uh, whatever. I really am. I really, really am. But my parents found this pot and it reminded me of the story. My friend Nancy Butler, who's a fantastic artist. She's so good. She's from Macon. And she went um, to church with me a long time ago. We were taking a class she was doing on Wednesday night supper. She was doing this art class. And, um, we were doing pinch pots and I'm going to put the picture of my pinch pot in the show notes as well. But my parents found it. Of course I forgot it when I left, but my parents found it. And all I can remember is her looking at me and looking at my pot and looking at me and looking at my (laughs) pot and going, Oh, Katie, (laughs) we'll find something you're good at. (laughs) And so I found that little pinch pot. It just brought back that story. Made me giggle so much because I'm just not an artist, but I love it. Well, I Um, get it because uh, we, when Etta was still around, Etta was my original Weimar owner. um, A local artist here used to do paint your pet parties. Oh yeah. And so you get there and she had drawn like grids on the canvas and like you take a picture and you use that picture and like she totally helps you and everybody else is doing it. And I she finally looked at me, she's like, Let me help you. Yeah. And at the end of the day, she posted it on her Facebook page and one of her followers was like, It looks like that dog had a stroke. (laughs) Right, exactly. Same thing. Oh Mandy. I get it. Well, you have an excellent you have an excellent eye for like decorating though. I do enjoy that very much, but I can't make it myself, you know? Yeah. 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 So, right. um, so the, all that to say that I love the arts. I can't wait. Like, I'm really looking forward to the Kennedy Center Honors. That's like one of my, that and the Tony Awards are like my big nights. Mandy and I definitely text her and the Tonys. Um, they came out with the Kennedy Center Honors list uh, the other day. They haven't set a oh. date for it, but of this year's nominees yeah it's a very interesting list um all of whom i am here for but it's just they've come up with the weirdest groupings of people um so billy crystal so that'll be fun right i'm surprised he's not already in i know but this year um renee fleming who's a classic vocalist who i'd heard of but not really much but i looked her up she's great uh, Barry Gibbs of the Bee Gees. Yes, and ma'am. Look, then we take a hard right turn, and I'm here for it. I am here for it. Queen Latifah. Oh, uh, yeah. Love it. I'm, I'm, Absolutely. Yep. And Dion Warwick, who that's the one that surprised me the most, wasn't already in there. Yeah. Um, but she's not. So that's going to be a great um line up it'll probably be i think it's in the fall when they'll show it online they usually uh, do it girl it's usually the week after christmas 
Yep, there we go. So we got something it's to look forward week to after Christmas. But I'm still not be a over, good show. I am still not over the year that Oprah got inducted because I forgot. Oh. I was traveling because that my mom's birthday is December 30th, and so we're usually somewhere that week after yep, Christmas. Yep, yep. And I forgot to put it on my calendar, and I missed Oprah's. It was so good induction, and let me tell you, you know, Macon was um, the last year of Oprah's show. You know, she went and did her favorite things in Macon. Do you yeah. remember that? Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. And let me tell y'all, a large part of why, and the reason she went to Macon was because that was like her largest audience viewership, yeah. like mm -hmm. per capita or whatever. Yep. A large part of that was me because oh. for seven years, same. Seven years, I lived in Macon, Georgia, and recorded and watched the Oprah Winfrey show every day. Every day. Every day. We watched every day. day. Um, I love that. Yeah, and you know, she came back. They're doing a um, a musical version of the Color Purple movie, so they turned it into a musical. Did you not? Did you not see the uh, trailer when you went oh. to see Barbie? Oh, I saw it, honey. It I was, was one so of our excited. trailers. Yeah. Some of it was filmed in Macon cool yep and just so happens theater macon was doing the color purple oh wow <laughs> so the color purple cast met the color purple cast oh how fun it, yeah, it was so cool so it was really neat that's great um, yeah so i love that we both love the arts very much so i know we'll have a lot of that on here as well and i'm so here for it and when i saw that the other day i was like that's perfect what's your so i think my favorite kennedy center honors performance ever well, it, it, may it, it may have been it may have it may have been a Grammy performance. I, somebody was it Tina Turner that got inducted and Beyonce was yes, that at the Grammys? That was so or was that no, that Kennedy was Kennedy. Yeah, that was Kennedy. Beyonce that was good. Inducting that. Uh, it's funny. So when when I worked on the Hill for Shaxby, I was his scheduler, and so every member of Congress gets invited to the Kennedy Center Honors. Oh, okay. And so every invitation that comes in, I, I you know, put my hands on yeah. and some of them are non-transferable. Some of them you can have a staff person go to represent you. Well, guess what was non-transferable? The Kennedy Center. Center Honors. And I begged him to please come back and take me anyway, yes. but I couldn't talk him into it. Dang it. Yeah. Well, I love it. I love that show. Um, I love the, the performances that they put together are always so good yeah um yep i'm with you that's a good one yeah that's a good one so that's a good list it'll be a good good show this year i'm so excited um but my pinch pots will not get me anywhere near the kennedy <laughs> center or their honors or any other museum of any kind so there we go. Uh, the other thing that i am so excited about and i shouldn't be this excited about it but i am is uh bama rush talk are you on the the clock app are you on the top? so i i i I got like, on the clock app maybe just to watch Bama Rush Talk, but like two years ago. So that was the first year. Now yeah, we're on it, year three. And I still follow some of the girls from last year. It's ridiculous. I'm a 40 <clears throat> something year old woman um, following Alabama Rush, but I'm loving it. They're great. They're so cute. It's so entertaining. It is very entertaining. And I can't imagine going through rush at a big university like that uh -uh. i couldn't have done it nope nope could not Neither. just physically i couldn't have done it oh, like, I know. that's the the bags that they pack with all their stuff in it can you imagine oh. having to go to all those parties in macon georgia oh there's God. no way like you would melt yeah you would melt immediately yes immediately no yeah it was hard enough i you know once i got in because, you know, we are, Mandy and I are sisters in the bond. Um, <laughs> once I got in and saw it from the other side, I thought, how the heck did I ever make it through? Um, this is crazy. Listen, so I was an orientation assistant my sophomore year. So I missed rush retreat. So I came in and, you know, was trying to figure everything out yeah. during rush. And I thought, this is the worst thing ever. I was a horrible rusher. I was yeah. like, it was so bad. So the next year I was on Panhellenic and I got elected as head Roka. Oh, I love being a Roka. And then my senior year, 
I ran for president and I said, if I don't win president, then the only other thing I'm going to do is rush chair because then you don't have to live in the house yep. and you're done, you know, immediately and Week you can one. enjoy your senior year. Yeah. So that's oh, wow. exactly what I did. So I only, per- I only really participated in rush on the other side one year the other two years I ran it in various degrees yeah I I really you know and it's so funny I am um my denomination is the United Methodist Church and we move around a lot that's kind of our thing and I like to think that when they place preachers in churches it's just like sorority rush that (laughs) bishop has a big board and it has all (laughs) the names and your stats and the churches and you match that's exactly what it is the ridiculous thing the the ridiculous amount of knowledge that i still know about people Uh, who went through rush my senior year of college It's a little frightening. It is. And now with the interweb, can you imagine, I could not even imagine, first of all, having that when I was that age, I would have definitely never gotten in. Second, like the research they do on these girls and you got to scrub your socials and you know, all this, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, crazy. crazy. I will say that my mom, my mom came, my roommate Molly's mom came, they came Mm -hmm. to help us. And uh, my mom did finally say, could you please stop using the F word quite so much? <laughs> Look, it is, it is a marathon, not a sprint. It I said, no, ma'am. They don't listen hours. to me. They it is frustrating. To me. It is just, oh, God, I'm having, I'm being triggered. Ooh, I'm just kidding. Poor Jane. Poor Jane. Uh, poor Jane. I was like, no, I can't. They will not listen to me if I don't. don't listen to me unless I cut some <laughs> I know. With some real leadership. I love That's it. some real leadership right there. I they won't it. listen to you unless you drop the F-bomb. Yeah. Oh, anyway. So but the, yeah, I do, I do thing, find, what now? I do find that if it, Bama Rush, Rush type very entertaining, and I'd really want to go to the pants store. Oh, there's one in Auburn, too. So, I don't... I'm, now that suny lee is not at auburn i'm not as i should have gone while i had the chance that was dumb but there's a pants store in auburn too so if i ever find myself down there that's when i'm going in the pants store good it's a thing um the last thing that i had to talk about today um that i think will be a good transition our next section is um i went back and listened to our first episode and i said very incorrectly that mandy turned me on to baseball now look she did help me rekindle my love for college televised baseball (laughs) however comma i doubt he will but if the high school baseball coach from uh macon ever listens to that episode he will be hurt (laughs) his heart will be crushed because when i was in high school i lettered in baseball because I kept the books for so many years. I can keep a stat book for baseball like you would not believe. Where did you go to um, high school? I went to First Presbyterian FPD. Day School. I'm an FPD uh-huh. girl. Went the 14 years the whole time. And you can tell Katie kept the book because I she, give is an error to hard. she is hard on these boys, y'all. She will throw out an error in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. I'm like, E4 every time um i used to and i was that way in high school too and finally coach jimmy turner who i adore and greg moore who was um is the athletic director at fpd now um unfortunately an alabama fan but um they would look i would have to they would make me ask because i was like giving them out left and right then too they're like (laughs) hey that's not really an error that's a little harsh i'm like but he should have gotten it (laughs) like if he's superman yeah maybe so, yeah, so I love baseball. I don't love televised baseball. I find it's too slow for TV, but that's another um, thing I want to talk to you about one day, Mandy, is this new clock thing. And I don't I know if we say, have time to get into that today. I think it's a thing. 
I was going to say, if you have you given it a try this year? Not this year. So I we'll, need to. We'll circle back to that. I really need to. I love it live. I love it. I love any sport live. I think it's so fun. Um, I get into, I'm very competitive, but it's just too slow for TV. So I, I don't really do the Braves because of that. But um, I was um, definitely a baseball nerd long before. I uh, went to college and went to the SEC tournaments and all that kind of stuff. I um, I don't know if I should admit this out loud, but I went to high school with John Rocker. And <laughs> so we had scouts at our baseball games. So, you know, his stats and having those right were very important. So Coach Turner and Coach Moore and um, Joe Childs as well all taught me very, very well. And I'm so thankful that I was given that love of baseball early. But after I went back and listened to that last podcast and I said that it was all you, I was like, got to correct myself. Better correct that because they're going to, if they ever hear it, which they probably won't, but if they ever hear it, they will be very upset. (laughs) And if you know Jimmy Turner, he'll put his welding mask on and come get me. So, So did you watch baseball as a child? not really my grandmother loved it dad's mom you could never call her during the braves i mean she would not answer you wouldn't well, know so did your dad her. did your dad watch the braves no uh That's why, that explains it because yeah you know, that explains we grew up it. in the age when yeah there was one tv and it had four channels yep. abc cbs nbc and tbs there we go you're right and, well i guess five because wgm too we did go um, up uh, to Atlanta every once in a while like I saw Dale Murphy play we went to the Macon Braves the Macon Braves were a big thing so we went to those a lot but we didn't go up to Atlanta a lot yeah so that's we grew up I can remember when we lived in Birmingham I was probably in the first grade and my sister and I we can still to this day if you ask us we can give you the entire starting lineup it's probably the 82 Braves um and we would drive over i think we drove over and my dad beat ass up pickup truck to atlanta sat in the outfield um and then when i graduated from law school and went to work in noonan um steve bedrosian who was one of the starting pitchers on that team yeah i'm sitting at my desk in noonan and steve bedrosian walks in the door and i'm on the phone and i'm just like oh Oh my gosh. Struck oh, yeah. silent. Yeah. And then immediately hung up the phone and called my sister at work. You know, it's back before cell phones. And I'm like, Bedrock just walked in the door. So anyway, well, yeah. You know, Glenn still... Hubbard was the manager at the Macon Braves for a while. And um, so we would see him. And that was like, you know, the Dale Murphy, Glenn Hubbard days. That was my childhood yeah. too. Yeah. Brett, Brett Butler mm. was the one I was in love with. Love that. Loved me some Brett Butler. I watched, I don't know if you were in making it at the time, because I was in college probably, but Chipper and Andrew Jones were on the Andrew, Making Braves. I missed Chipper. Time. Chipper got, yeah, Chipper got. They weren't there up. long. He got called up. Yeah. Because um, he, he, I was just looking at that actually. And I, because I was thinking they were both, they both played together. Chipper must have gotten, because you know, he tore his I mean, ACL. Yeah. He tore his ACL and he got, I bet he was there on rehab. I bet they, I, they did play together and he was there on a rehab assignment. They, when I went back and looked to verify my memory that yeah. I've seen them both play for the Macon Braves, mm-hmm. Chipper got called up before, but I bet that's what it was. He was doing a rehab stint from his Had ACL. Because be. I remember, I remember where our seats were. We were on the third mm-hmm. baseline um, and they were both there they weren't there very long because both of them were so good they didn't stay and yeah. even john when he played in macon was not there very long they called him up john john dated one of my sorority sisters oh, well that's a whole we saw a lot of john that's a whole podcast that we won't get that into we will not we? be able to have <laughs> <laughs> the things that i know yeah Ooh, yeah anyway so um I just want to clear that up. I love baseball. I love baseball. I love it. I have loved it for a long time. Uh, And I'm really glad that Mandy and I have that to bond over and have had it for a while. And that I am um, really tuned in now to college baseball again, which has been so much fun. Very fun. So thank you for that. Sure, ma'am. So find your game, the next section. I put a couple things in here. I don't know if Mandy, you've got anything you want to talk about with sports right now, but 
Let me just say, Simone Biles is back in a big way. And it makes me so excited for next summer because I she's sent it around. She's going to do it again. I'm so proud of her. I think that's so for those of you who aren't as crazy as we are. Um, <laughs> Simone Biles uh, is a gymnast and she was the girl who like swept everything two Olympics says ago um and just had really not lost in years and years and years and at the most recent olympics she um had a really hard time and admitted that you know it was the pressure of everything and she ended up sort of bowing out of several events and um you know and she was supposed to be the darling of the whole entire games that year so she um has taken some time off since then. She got married um, to a cute little got football married, player. Married, yep, got married and uh, oh, but made her return last weekend and won the overall uh, championship. Just did great. great. She basically got the yips, is what I kind of, if you're familiar yeah. with that term and not necessarily gymnastics. So she got lost in the air, which means she, in her brain, was not connecting with her body properly, and she kind of lost where she was in the air and that can be extremely dangerous when you're 15 feet in the air and you don't know where you're supposed to land so um, not that I know anything about it because you know I was in the advertisement for the gymnast when I was five but I'm not a gymnast <laughs> we'll, we'll show that later but um I just cannot even imagine what she went through and I'm so proud of her she just it's like she never quit she came back with and just won everything she tried yeah. And I'm so excited. But That's, it made me um, get excited for the Olympics. Oh, yeah. Always excited for the Olympics. It's going to be a great team. Um, but yeah, she's just having fun again. Yeah. You know, I think that's, I, I just listened to a great podcast. Um, I meant to tell you about this with Allison Felix. Oh, I yeah. Like maybe it's a hyphenated name and I can't remember what the hyphenated second part is. She's a sprinter. Yes. Um, it was, I she was her. on, she was on, on Armchair Expert. Oh, um, with, Dax, with Dax and Monica, and it was a great interview. You should listen okay. to it. I will. I'll go back. And but listen. it's just you know, it's crazy. These the pressure that these athletes are, are put under um to perform every four years. It's, so you know, the World Cup. Mm -hmm. You know, sorry, the women just lost. Um, but Dansby, who was a Vanderbilt baseball player, there we go. Then was the Brave shortstop for yep. seven years, and just uh has now is now the short stop for the chicago cubs his wife is a professional soccer player and she tore her knee um mm -hmm. like in a basically an exhibition game like three months ago so yeah. she didn't even get to participate in the world cup so these when the, these events that are like every four years yeah. it's just so much added pressure to oh, yes. to what you know just the regular performance pressure so well, and Allison, Allison Felix, that would be a good conversation for another podcast because she was really big about sponsorships. And when she got pregnant, she got dropped and there's all kinds of stuff we could talk about with that. So I love yeah, she her. Gets, she gets into all of that on this podcast and uh, she now yeah, has her own shoe line. I, I need that is, I didn't let, I learned on this podcast that even women's shoes are based on a men's foot model. Nice. There are no shoes other than Allison Felix's, apparently, um, that are made, you know, for women based for women. on our feet. Um, I think she colors, can. I think she can. Yeah, right. I think you can get them at Athleta because that was when Nike dropped her. Athleta yeah. is the one that ended they up dropped. picking her up, and I think yeah. they're selling her shoes. I can't remember the. It was it was real meaningful the name. I can't remember what it is though. It's like the inside of a wave or something. Anyway, it's a great podcast. Love she's it. Well, it. she's, yep. I'll definitely listen to that. She's fabulous. Love her. Um, and then I saw this, this is just a little something I saw that just cracked me up. I don't know why it hit me funny, but Shamar Moore, do you know who that is? The actor? Uh, excuse me. Beautiful young and the Restless. Yeah. Young and the Wine are baby. He is gorgeous. Do not ever, do not ever wonder if I know anybody who was ever on a soap opera. 
Okay, there we go. Nice. I Good know time. them all. I know them all. Well, shame more and more. We're gonna have to start watching professional cornhole then, because <laughs> that fella is a professional cornhole player. Like, why did you see this, and how did this happen? I don't know. I saw it on um the clock app. Somebody was making fun of him, but I think it's great. I mean, whatever. He's not Ooh. acting right now because nobody is. So right, um, nice you know, cornhole. why not? Do it, Shamar. Get it. He's like in a bowling shirt with patches on it. Listen, it doesn't matter. It look good, man. He's making it look good. Does not matter. Mm -mm. Uh -uh. I know. Yeah, you (laughs) should Google that and find it because it's really funny looking. I will. I will look that up. I thought that was fun. And then, I mean, the the last thing is, you know, with sports for this episode, I, I just football and we're gonna have to do a whole deep dive into this college football right now is a hot mess it's a hot mess and the realignments and what that ripple effect is going to be that like there's so much out there about it and i um you can hear about it wherever but like i'm really concerned about other sports and this and how they're going to be affected by it so um that may be something we can talk about later but what I did see that I'm very excited about college football is that the Tiger Paws have been painted on the Tiger Walk in advance of the first game. It is right around the corner, people. So explain to people how you became an Auburn fan. Okay, so I um, come from a long line of Auburn Tigers. My granddaddy came back from World War II and got the GI Bill and went to Auburn Polytechnic as it was known back then and there were no women at the time or the first women maybe were admitted and he had some smart to say about that but I won't go there because I love my granddaddy (laughs) but um it was um, and it eventually became Auburn and he loved it he loved his time there um we I went to football my my uncle went there as well my uncle buddy and he met his wife there Deborah and my brother went there. They were all ATOs. All three of the boys were ATOs. My aunt was a FAMU at Auburn because yeah. you know, all the good FAMUs. Um, but I have gone to Auburn football games uh, since I was two or three. Like my very first Halloween, I was like two and a half months old. And they put me in a little Auburn cheerleading uniform and put me on my grandparents front porch and rang the doorbell and hid in the bushes and there was just me with my little auburn self trick-or-treating in my grandparents house i'm glad you didn't fall over <laughs> well i mean i was in my carrier i think oh okay <laughs> i didn't know we had those back in the 70s well we met look we definitely didn't have car seats because that yeah <laughs> um i used to ride around in the front seat of my friend janet that's car. yeah on the on the middle it's a wonder I, on the i'm hump. alive right Still i would stand on the, on the floorboard she would drive <laughs> me around town standing on the front floorboard um and then you know i started going to games like really one of the first games one of my very first memories one of my core memories is back when this is a long time ago georgia tech was in the sec it's a long time ago and because it was in Atlanta, we lived in Macon. We just rode up the road. We went to the varsity for lunch. I was little. I was maybe three. And I remember walking into Bobby Dodd Stadium, holding my granddaddy's hand. And Aww. he leaned down and he said to me, you know, Katie, we are visitors in there. It's like being a visitor at their house. And we're going to be really nice to them because they're letting us come here and watch this game with them. He said, we're probably going to beat them really bad. <laughs> So we have to be really nice when that happens. We want to be, you know, good winners and good losers. And um, just that little lesson and those times with them and all those games going, you know, my whole life have been gotcha. just one of my okay. favorite things. So that's how I became an Auburn fan. And so they don't, so the the tiger prince, what'd you say? The Paul? So the tiger paws. So tiger, tiger paws before every game, home game, the team walks to the stadium um, on the tiger walk and it's lined with fans and it's a thing and the cheerleaders go out for them and the band's playing and everybody's hooting and hollering and excited for them so the paws have been painted on the pavement 
So do they just fade every year? So they have yeah, to they got to repaint them. Okay. So the tiger walk is ready, which means that's exciting. Season's right around the corner, man. I can't okay. wait. It's coming. Cannot wait. So that that made me real excited this week when I saw that they have painted that um on the the okay. tiger walk. Well, good. Yeah. Good. Uh, so I think uh, our do you want me to introduce you? Yes, sir, ma'am. Okay, so our last section that we're going to do each week is going to be called Find Your Favorites. And um, Mandy's going to take it this week. Um, so Mandy, I can't wait to hear what all good things that you've come up with <laughs> that are your new favorite things. Well, they these apply to you zero at all. Well, but I figure there are a lot of people out there that they will help um, because I don't know if anybody's noticed but we have moved to the surface of the sun. Oh, yeah. It is. It's hotter than so the hot hinges outside. on hell. <laughs> as I like to say. It is. I don't, I mean, I grew up in Moultrie for the love of God. I don't remember it ever being this bad consistently. Mm-hmm. Not consistently. Um. So because what I, because most of the foster dogs that I have are heartworm positive, I have to come up with a lot of ways to keep them entertained and stimulated that do not involve exercise because they cannot exercise after heartworm treatment for 30 days. So as a result of that, I've gotten all kinds of tools um, that you guys can now use in this heat because listen, don't, don't walk. I do Insta stories all the time about people walking on the bike path. And I mean, I do it when it's like 97 degrees for God's sake, don't do it now. <laughs> My friend Casey yesterday, who lives in St. Simons. <laughs> she, sorry, Casey, I'm going to sell you out. Do it, Casey girl. texted us and said, don't, whatever you're thinking about doing, don't take a walk at one o'clock right now. I almost died. It is, I was like, what, what, what is what? wrong with you? And she said, well, it said, I looked it up and it said the temperature was 82. I figured it couldn't be that bad. I pulled it up and I can't remember now, but it was, I think it was, it, the feels like temp was 118 in St. Simons. Is she, she when like I sent her that, she, her, or did she grow up in the South? She grew up in the South. Then, um, oh, all right, I mean, long time in the, in St. Simons. Okay. Um, but when, when she, she said, when I sent her that screenshot from my weather app, she said, Oh, well, mine was set to Cupertino, California. Maybe we should move there. <laughs> So of all the anyway. places. But so to keep your dog said Casey that you can use these with Ollie, sweet little Ollie. Um, and other folks, you know, th- these are just good things to do. That the recent research, just what you wanted, cutting edge, cutting edge. research. Look, we're not uh, just pretty faces. We are very intelligent women. So for a lot of a long time, the, the theory has been you have to exercise your dog or else they're just not stimulate they're you know they don't get stimulated and they're hyper and they're they misbehave and some more recent research has discovered that allowing them to sniff is just as effective as exercising them love that so um one of the things i use is called a snuffle mat that i got off of amazon and it's basically like it's made of felt and it's, but, oh, I forgot to put my laundry in the dryer. Oh, I just remember that because I'm washing it right now. Um, in there. It, it's made of felt and it's basically like shag carpeting. Love and it. so you can put treats in there. I actually feed Jenny in it um, because she eats, if you have a dog that eats too quickly mm-hmm. um, and you're worried about bloat, which is another thing we have to talk about sometimes. But mm-hmm. if you, so if you put it in the sniffle mat then they have to dig around for yep. it and, and it takes a little time and it stimulates that thing. sniffing. Yeah. Um, so that's a good thing that I like to use a lot. They also have a things called lick mats and the, those first came around people were using them when they were bathing their dogs and they like have suction cups on them and they're plastic and mm. you know they're the little prongs on them aren't as high but you can you know s- smear some peanut butter or wow. yogurt or um pumpkin pumpkin's really good for pups 
So you smear that in and you could stick it on the wall of the shower. And so they'll sit there and lick that the whole time they're getting a bath. Um, I, I had not gotten my uh, lick mat yet when I had my foster sky and she needed medicated baths like every day. And so I just smeared some peanut butter on the wall. That dog could not have cared less about that peanut butter. So then I just had peanut butter on my wall. So okay. test it out first to make sure your dog's interested before you, you know, and at least with the the lick mat, you don't have to clean peanut butter off your wall. And then I just uh, had peanut butter on my wall. So. I mean, in my shower, what else? I love it. What else do you want in life? But anyway, so, but I do recommend the ones that come with suction cups on them. Mm. Cause you can stick them to the floor now, you know, Moira, one of my former fosters, she chewed off one of the suction cups. <laughs> um, but if you keep an eye on them and keep them from getting out of hand, that keeps them from carrying them all over your house and getting whatever goodie yeah. you have put in them all over your house. Cause Love it sticks that. to the floor. Um, and then the third one I have um, is a Kong, which most dog owners are familiar with Kongs. They're like yeah. a plastic thing that you, is hollow in the middle and I had always just sort of stuck a treat in there and gone on my, gone about my business well it turns out you can fill it up with all kinds of stuff and then freeze it and then give it to your dog and it takes them that much longer to Look get through the goodie that's in it and the licking is apparently also soothing if you have a dog who's anxious yep. so that's a good thing if you are, you know are dealing with some separation anxiety um you have to be careful i wouldn't give i wouldn't give them one and leave it until you know whether or not they're going to tear it up i have um a black one that's like the that's the you can't tear it up kind yeah. and so far nobody has torn it up and i've had 10 fosters so that's a pretty good recommendation. Some of the other ones are a, a softer rubber. Sure. And so those could be torn up for sure. But I'll even, um, I'll feed Jenny in that and I'll like pour some food in and put some peanut butter in and then like layer it all the way mm -hmm. up. Um, yogurt is great for dogs. Um, so, you know, you could fill it up with some yogurt and put it in there. If you're dealing, luckily right now, I'm not dealing with a dog who has weight, uh, issues as far as needing to lose weight i have had those before if you've got that situation you can like fill it up with green beans um or like pieces of sweet potato mm -hmm. um and then some chicken broth and then you have to there's a little bitty hole in the bottom so you have to like fill that first but then you yeah. can stick it in a cup and pour the chicken broth over all that and freeze it and then that's something good that, that that'll keep them occupied for a little while so I love that. Just some, just some ideas for y'all in case your dog is driving you stark raving mad. In this heat. In this heat. What about your friend Katie that's driving you stark raving mad? <laughs> if you're not, if you, I would prescribe margaritas. There we go. Done. Margaritas for Katie. There's a picture in the fridge right now. <laughs> Listen, I'm not going to shoot you a bird. I know. Miss Hall 30. I, I, forget. On, I won't say anything else about it. I have on day done. 14. I'm almost halfway okay. done. Halfway. Look, I'm so proud of you. So proud. Last I checked, I had lost four pounds. So, I mean, but listen, this is where the rubbers meet in the road because yeah. if we're honest, in preparation for going on Whole 30, I had really been like, carbo loading right like, let me eat all the potato chips that i'm not gonna be able to eat for 30 days yep. so i had probably gained at least three pounds before i started so where i am now is the weight where i have sort of been for probably i don't know two years now and i've tried granted half halfway tried several things and nothing's budging and so the whole reason i'm doing this whole 30 is because you know i'm almost 50 I just, and Whole30 has worked in the past for me to lose weight. So I'm doing it. I'm doing it all the way. I'm like sticking with it Love just it. so I can find out if I am capable of losing weight anymore. If I don't lose any weight, then y'all it's over. I'm it's just, over. my metabolism is done and I'm not ever going to try to lose weight again. That's what it is. It. So. I love it. Part well, of me kind of hopes I don't lose weight. Good luck to you. That's what I was about to say. Good luck, I think. All right. Like, 
It's yeah. a win-win. It's a win-win. Yeah, it is. What I'm going to request, and this is very selfish, is that when the Olympics come around, that you are not on Whole30. Listen, I'm not. No. I'll be done by then. We got to do our um, opening ceremony. I mean, you know, like, we've got so much to do. And there are Paris the next ones? Yeah, Paris, which is French food. Forget which is about it. going to be butter. I mean, I, I feel like it's going to be butter. We're just going to eat butter. And I'm I'm, I'm fine with that. I miss butter and bread yeah. so much. It's French wine. Some rosé. Love it. Done. I know. It's going to be so much fun. Well, Mandy, it's been great. This has been fun. We had a few technical, figure it out. We'll we'll get better at that part. I promise. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, I love it. I love the requests. I love that our friends are listening and, and enjoying it. And I'm serious about that merch. Like, go crazy. Tell us some of the crazy stuff you want to see, and we will um, either figure out a way to make it a reality or figure out a, a, a better way to use it. But the ideas are always good. We love it. So Absolutely. thank y'all. Thanks, and we y'all. will see you next week. There'll be all kinds of fun stuff. Little League World Series starts next week, which I love. Um, I'm going, I hope, to the High Museum next week. So that'll be fun. So there's going to be all kinds of fun stuff to talk about. All right, y'all. Everybody have a good week. Bye, y'all.